aboard the egg carrier, the group stared Vegeta in the healing tank. Eggman says that he uses tank to house Metal Sonic and Metal Goku, so its healing properties won't work fully on Vegeta. But at least it'll keep him from dying. Goku tells him that's a good thing, as they need him alive and try and find out where this dynamic is. Goku, Sonic, and Krillin are hesitant on trusting Eggman after all that he's done over the years. But he tries to explain that he's attempting to be better, it's still his mission in life to destroy the two of them, but after what happened with Piccolo and Shadow, he decided it would do him some good to team up against the big baddies, that way neither of them have to die. Still not something they fully trust, but really if it wasn't for Eggman, then a whole lot more people would have died. So they have to thank him on that one. They also flew by to pick up Amy from Korin Tower, who thankfully survived a Cyberman explosion and was healed up by one of Korin's Senzu beams. Sonic is really happy to see Amy, as at least she made it. She is devastated to find out that Tails and so many others died against the Saiyans, but at least they have the small ray of hope in Namek. They just hope that Vegeta wasn't lying about Piccolo and Kami being aliens. Eventually, Vegeta comes to and attempts to escape the pod, but he is far too weak to escape or do any damage against all these powerhouses in front of him. Goku asks him why he decided to come here and kill all of his friends. What could he possibly gain from that? Vegeta smiles, revealing that it's just in the Saiyan nature to fight and kill. Doesn't he ever drive for fighting? He's lying if he doesn't. Goku goes closer to Vegeta, saying that of course he does, but he would never go out of his way to kill innocent people. He'd only go after the ones who hurt people, like him. They should finish him off, but he has valuable information that may be able to undo all of the damage he's caused. Vegeta assumes that they're talking about the Chaos Emeralds, but no, he's talking about the Dragon Balls. Goku explains to Vegeta about Kami and the Dragon Balls, and if he was lying about Piccolo being a Namekian. He is surprised to hear all this talk about Dragon Balls, which objects like these he could just as easily gain the ultimate power. If they're on Namek, then he has a chance of defeating Black Doom and even better, Frieza. Vegeta says he wasn't lying, and if they had to Namek, they could find Dragon Balls there. To try and gain an alliance, he says that with them, they could also defeat the villainous Black Doom, who destroyed the Saiyan race. Goku and Sonic know who he is from King Kai, and Raditz says that the other Saiyans needed their help to defeat him. Vegeta says that Frieza, their ruler, has been trying to deal with Black Doom forever now, though around 6 years ago, that became impossible, as Black Doom gained an immense power and was able to defeat many of Frieza's troops in a single blast. Frieza was getting desperate and told the Saiyans if they didn't go out to kill Black Doom, then he would kill them himself. This left them in a no-win situation, as they knew that they would easily be killed by Black Doom. This is why Raditz came to Earth to find Kakarot, and once him and Nappa heard about the Chaos Emeralds, they knew coming here might be their best bet against Doom and Frieza. Sonic begins to change again. A dark aura surrounds him as he yells at Vegeta. They could have helped him. If they had just come here and asked for their help, they would have done anything in their power to defeat those two tyrants. Especially since Raditz was Goku's own brother. But no, they had to be selfish assholes and act even worse than Eggman over here and kill all of their friends. They are so stupid to act just as evil, and now they'll have no help whatsoever. Maybe it's a good thing that all these Saiyans are extinct. Goku tries to calm Sonic down some more, as if he unleashes more power, he's gonna blow up the egg carrier. Sonic reverts back and says that they'll never help him, and should just hand him over to Black Doom now. Sonic runs off with Eggman telling Goku to let him go. Sonic powers up into his Kaioken to fly off of the egg carrier, and then runs around to clear his head. All he can see is Vegeta killing Tails, something he'll never forgive him for. He never wants to kill, but this guy, he deserves it. They can't just leave him here while they go off to Namek, as he'll kill whoever is left, be sure of it. Sonic eventually exhausts his Kaioken and stops right in front of the king's castle, exhausted. Princess Sally notices Sonic and goes over to try and help him out. Sonic is brought inside and tells Sally about all that's happened. The news of the deaths of everybody shocks Sally, and she's even more shocked on Sonic's behavior, as she's never seen him so angry before. He's always somebody who is so carefree in attitude, always on top of everything, but this battle seems to have broken his spirit. Sally tells Sonic that it's okay to be angry about his friends. It's something that everybody goes through more than once in their lives. He doesn't need to push everybody else away though. He still has plenty of friends who are willing to help him, and with all of them working together, they can revive the Fallen. It won't be easy, but hey, they've survived so many things already. 
Eggman, Chaos, Shadow, now the Saiyans, as long as they're all able to keep a cool head and keep Vegeta in check, they can go to Namek, revive everybody, and maybe eventually find Frieza and Black Doom. This pep talk actually gave Sonic a chance to clear his mind. He's really happy he confided in Sally and thanks her for helping. Sally blushes, saying he's helped save her life more than once, so of course she can help save his. She asks if she can come up to the egg carrier as well, as if she's up there, she could talk to Vegeta to get him to cooperate in getting them to Namek. Sonic is worried for her safety, but trusts her enough that she won't get herself killed. Sonic flies Sally back up to the egg carrier, where Goku is happy to see that he's come back around. Sally is able to threaten Vegeta enough to get him to cooperate in getting them to Namek, and the group begin their preparations for getting there. First off, they're gonna need a spaceship, and thankfully the spaceship that Kami used to get to Earth is still on Angel Island, so the group take that to use. Eggman, Bulma, and Dr. Briefs begin to do some more advanced work on it, with Bulma and her dad very wary of working with Eggman, but he is a genius, so his help makes the project go on faster. They all discuss who's going to take the trip to Namek, with Sonic, Goku, Krillin, and Amy being obvious people to go. Though, they're gonna bring Eggman along as well, since nobody feels comfortable leaving him alone on the planet, just in case he decides to launch another Death Egg and roboticize the entire planet. Gohan tells his dad that he's going too, since he was far too weak to do anything to save Piccolo or Knuckles, so he needs to do this to avenge them. Goku definitely wants his son to go, as it'll be a learning experience for him. Chi-Chi obviously isn't okay with this, but after Gohan yells at her to make his stance clear, she reluctantly allows him to go. A lot of people are going, so Kami's ship isn't going to be big enough to carry everybody. Thankfully, Vegeta tells him that they can modify his ship to be bigger, that way it can carry the others. They still don't trust him very much, but thankfully with the tech from his, Nappa's, and Radis' ship, they're able to create a bigger ship that can house everybody else. With all the modifications from Bulma, Eggman, and Dr. Briefs, both ships will get to Namek in only six days. This is it. They're going to Namek to bring everybody back. Goku, Gohan, Sonic, Vegeta, and Eggman will take Kami's ship, with Bulma, Amy, Krillin, Metal Sonic, and Metal Goku taking the Saiyan ship. The group all say that they meet each other over there and blast off into space. Princess Sally, Gamma and Beta, the Chaotix, Chotsu, and Takal see them off wishing them the best of luck on bringing everybody back. In Kami's ship, Bulma thankfully managed to add a gravity chamber, since Goku suggested it for training. Luckily, Eggman can just go in the other room to work on his robotics some more, leaving the group to train. Sonic doesn't want Vegeta to train with them as well, but he says that if he doesn't, then he'll be killed pretty easily if they run into Frieza or Black Doom out here. Right now, he's a traitor to the Frieza Empire, and if he dies, then they have no chance against Frieza whatsoever. Sonic reluctantly goes along with this, and the group begin their training. Goku makes sure to ask Sonic about the Dark Form, as that seemed like a corrupted version of Super Sonic. Sonic says he has no idea what the form is, just that it is him getting really angry. Goku says while the approach is one of violence, thankfully now they know that Sonic still has some chaos energy inside of him. So if he's able to tap into it without any negativity, then maybe he can turn super without the emeralds. Sonic says that he doubts he's powerful enough to do that, but Goku keeps encouraging him, as if he can transform into the powerhouse that is Dark Sonic, then Super Sonic should be no sweat. The group begin their training together, with Vegeta trying to learn more about the Akari form of Goku's, and if he can eventually use that himself. After a few days of intense gravity training, an alarm on the ship begins to go off. Eggman bursts out of his room, telling them that they're all under attack. Sonic asks if they can do anything, with Eggman saying it's him, so of course he added weapons to the ship. They all look out the window to see some black ship coming right towards them. Vegeta reassures them that it's not Frieza or Black Doom, but the ship does look familiar to him. Eggman still sees it as hostile though, so deploys a giant wrecking ball from under the ship and swings it right at the other one, with it just hitting and bouncing right off. Sonic asks if that's seriously all he added for weapons, and Eggman wondering how that didn't work. The black ship beams them in, with the group getting ready for a fight. Once the ship is docked, Sonic, Goku, and Vegeta burst out ready to fight. All they see in front of them though, are two small figures in these weird futuristic clothes. Vegeta recognizes them instantly and laughs. He asks what these two Nocturnus clan members are doing interrupting them. The two remove their helmets, revealing themselves. Sonic and Goku are really surprised to see that they're Echidnas. 
Shade, and Julie Sue tell Vegeta that their scouters picked up his signature, and they beamed him in to get his help. Vegeta sticks his hand up preparing an energy blast. He says that unlike them, he doesn't work for Frieza anymore, so it was a mistake to bring him here. Shade yells that they don't work for Frieza either, he betrayed them. Vegeta lowers his hand asking what they mean. Julie Sue explains that the Nocturnus clan were traveling to go on a mission to retrieve a bounty for Lord Frieza, but it turns out that he led them right into the Black Arms. Frieza just sent them to die, and pretty much everybody did. They only managed to survive due to pure luck, and take the ship and escape. They are the only two surviving members of the Nocturnus clan, and the two last echidnas. They heard about the Saiyans rebelling against Frieza as well, so figured that they'd come to him for help in getting revenge. Revenge against Frieza? Vegeta says that he may be powerful, but he's still nothing to him, so they're wasting their time. Goku chimes in though, saying that they actually know of a few echidnas on Earth and that they look just like T'Kal. Shade and Julie Sue are surprised to hear the name T'Kal, as they've heard from the stories that T'Kal sacrificed herself to seal away the great demon king Piccolo. Sonic catches him up on what happened with Piccolo, and the two are amazed to hear that Piccolo was defeated and that T'Kal is still alive. They would very much like to go to Earth to meet the legend, and maybe there? they can find a way to stay off of Frieza's radar. They don't have much time to talk though, as Eggman gets a detection of more life forms making their way towards the ship. They ask if it's just Bulma's crew coming to rescue them, but no, there are way more life forms on it, and it's not any kind of ship. Vegeta, Shade, and Julie Sue gasp. Not a ship? Then that must mean... Vegeta screams at the two that they're idiots stopping them here. Now the black arms are coming right at them. The comet crashes right into the ship, steering it way off course and flinging everybody around. Thankfully, Goku is able to protect Gohan, while Sonic got Eggman out of harm's way. Once they get a hold of their footing, the group all set up and watch as a bunch of black arms make their way over to them. Goku looks at these guys and gets a slight feeling that he's seen these creatures before. He can't really put his finger on it though. Sonic powers up into his Kaioken, ready for a fight, as Shade says that, wait, these aren't all the black arms. Vegeta realizes it too, and wonders why it's such a small portion. This is when Black Death and his experiment, Eclipse the Darkling, step out from the black arms, saying that they're here to finish off with the rest of the Nocturnes. Vegeta is relieved, Black Doom isn't here, it's only his little lackey. Black Death is surprised to see Vegeta, saying that he didn't expect to see a Saiyan today. This is even better then, as along with the Nocturnes, they'll finish off the Saiyans here today too. Vegeta says he'd like to see them try, but Julie Sue says he needs to be careful, as Eclipse is one of the ones who killed off a bunch of Nocturnes. He's a lot more powerful than he looks. Goku goes up to Vegeta, asking if these guys are really the ones who killed off the Saiyans. Vegeta says that they had a huge part. Frieza was ultimately the one who killed them all, but he wouldn't have right away if it wasn't for these guys. Goku keeps getting flashes in his head of a woman being stabbed through the stomach by one of these things, and while he doesn't know who she is, he gets a feeling of rage from it. Goku steps up, powering up into his Akari form. He tells Black Death that they're not going to be killing any more races today, not if he has anything to say about it. Black Death is surprised to see this kind of power from a Saiyan, and asks if Eclipse can handle it. Eclipse says that he's dealt with plenty of races who can transform. This one will be nothing. Shade asks where Black Doom is, with Black Death saying he has more important matters to attend to, as he's currently making his way to Namek to defeat the Namekians and the Saiyan's master, Frieza. Everybody's heart stops. They're going to Namek? And Frieza's on Namek? Oh god, they need to warn the others. Black Death says they won't be warning anybody, and yells for the Black Arms to charge. Eclipse and the Black Arms rush to group, with them rushing right back towards them, ready to battle. Meanwhile, the other group lands on Namek. Once everybody steps out, they wonder where the others are, as they all should have landed at the same time. Maybe they just landed on the other side of the planet? The metals try to detect any signs of their ship, but say that there is no sign of them on the planet, so they must have not arrived yet. This really worries them all, since what if the ship broke down up there and they need help? As they try and think of what to do, suddenly, two soldiers show up in some armor like what Vegeta and Nappa wore. The soldiers are kinda weirded out as these guys don't look like Namekians. They pick a bad day to come to the planet, so shoot at them. Amy is able to block the blast with her hammer, as Metal Sonic and Metal Goku rush in and blitz the two of them. With the soldiers killed in no time at all, Bulma asks who those guys were. Metal Sonic flies back over and says that his detector is picking up many life forms of strong powers. A lot feel very similar, so must be the Mechians. 
but there are many more that are way stronger and may relate back to those soldiers. Metal Goku says that he's picking up some sort of radio transmission from those energies, and he can hack into it to hear what they're saying. Bulma realizes these must be the scouters that the Saiyans had, so to be careful that they don't hear him. Metal Goku taps into the scouters' signal and the group listen in. They hear that Frieza, the Emperor of the Universe, is here and threatening the Namekians to give him their Dragon Ball. The elder Namekians refuse to hand them over, and then they hear so much screaming and death. The Namekians have been killed, and Frieza's henchmen, Zarbon and Dodoria, find a Dragon Ball and hand it over to their master. Frieza says that he's glad this is going so quickly, as with these four Dragon Balls, he only has three left until he can gain eternal life. Frieza and his soldiers detect the next village and fly off to destroy it as well. Our group is horrified over what they just heard, as with Frieza here, who is apparently leagues ahead of Vegeta, they have no chance of gaining all the balls. Metal Sonic says that this Frieza has an extremely high battle power, one he struggles to read over how large it is, though with his soldiers, they think they can handle them. They were both given upgrades since Vegeta, and even managed to get a hold of one of the vials that Tails had the laser vial. With this, they may be able to use it to grab all the Dragon Balls from the soldiers, but they need to use it wisely. They just need to get in close enough to them. Bulma says she'll wait in the ship for them to quickly make it back here, and the others can go on without her. Thankfully, since they're robots, they don't have any energy that can be detected, so the two pick up Krillin and Amy, carrying them over to where Frieza and his men are. Once they arrive, they see that the soldiers are already beginning to kill the Elder Namekians, trying to get information about the Dragon Balls. Amy is getting very riled up watching this, as she is sick of seeing all of this death. Krillin tells her to stand down for now, as they need to find an opening where they can swoop in and grab all the Dragon Balls. They all continue to watch, and the massacre happens just like in canon, with Mori destroying the scouters and Adoria killing him and going after the kids. Once Cargo is killed, this is when Amy can't take it anymore. She spin dashes right into Dodoria, knocking him right away from the other child, Dende. Dodoria goes flying into a nearby house as the others look on in confusion. Krillin curses that this is their moment, so and try and make it count. Metal Goku rushes in and elbows Zarbon across the face, making him drop the Dragon Balls in his hands. Metal Sonic then bursts in with his super speed and snatches all five Dragon Balls from the ground and takes off. Frieza screams for the others to do something, but Krillin appears and launches a solar flare at the group to blind them all. As Frieza and his men grab at the rise in pain, Metal Goku grabs Amy and Dende as him and Krillin fly off as fast as they can after Metal Sonic. Once they all can see again, Frieza demands Dodoria to go after them or he'll kill him right now. Dodoria flies off after the group and catches up with them pretty fast. Krillin asks what they're gonna do, with Metal saying that they fight. Metal Goku tells Metal Sonic to return the Dragon Balls to Bulma, he'll handle this guy. Metal Goku throws Amy and Dende to Krillin as he stops short and nails Dodoria right in the gut. Metal Goku begins his beatdown on Dodoria, with him not being able to fight back. This weird looking machine is really giving him a run for his money. Dodoria tries to fire a mouth beam at the robot, but Metal Goku just fires an artificial Kamehameha right back and overpowers the mouth beam. The beam goes right into Dodoria's head and blows it right off. Dodoria's headless body falls into the Namekian Ocean as Metal Goku flies back off to join the others. Once Metal Goku makes it back to the spaceship, Bulma tells them that they can't just sit out here in the open like this, as they're pretty much sitting ducks. They need to hide out until they can go after the rest of the Dragon Balls. The group turn the ship into a capsule and fly off to a nearby cave to hide out in. Thankfully, with the scouters gone, they won't be able to find them anymore, and hopefully with Metal Sonic speed, he'll be able to go about and find the other Namekians before Frieza and his men do. Once they get all the Dragon Balls, hopefully they can wish for their friends to be brought back to life as soon as possible, and then get off the planet before Frieza has a chance to find them. Dende tells the group that if there are five Dragon Balls here, then that must mean Frieza killed the Namekians in the other villages. There is only one village left besides the Grand Elder's hut, so they'll need to hurry and save the rest of his people. Amy says that she'll go off with Metal Sonic to find the Namekian villages, since, no offense, he's pretty scary looking so he'll probably just scare the villagers more. The two go off with Metal Goku and Krillin, left behind to guard the Dragon Balls. Frieza is infuriated that the Dragon Balls are taken right out from under his nose, so orders Zarbon and Apul to go and find them, and if they return without them, he'll kill them himself. The two fly off in fear, trying to find the rest of the Namekian villages. 
Thankfully, Metal and Amy manage to find one first, and with Amy's charm, she's able to warn the villagers of the impending threat of Frieza, and how he wants to steal their Dragon Ball. The villagers can sense that Amy has a pure heart, and trust her with their Dragon Ball, though they are exposed to a pool, who has flown by and found them. Metal Sonic detects him with his radar, and speeds up to him, and instantly belts him into the ground. Amy pounces on a pool, and her, along with the Namekian warriors of this village, tie him up to keep him as a prisoner. Since they can't be having him report back to Frieza, the elder of the village hands over to Dragon Ball, and tells him they should go and find a Grand Elder, as he has the last Dragon Ball. And maybe with his help, he can power them up enough so they can defeat these alien invaders. Amy is very hesitant on a power-up, since she doesn't think any kind of power besides the Chaos Emeralds would defeat Frieza and his men, but they have to try. Metal Sonic and Amy go off next to the Grand Elder's hut, but while they're on their way, Metal Sonic is kicked into the ground by Zarbon. Amy yells out as Zarbon rushes after her. Amy deflects his attacks with her hammer, but she's not fast enough to block all of them, and she's eventually nailed right in the gut and sent flying. Metal Sonic rushes back into attack, with his speed proving more than enough for Zarbon. Metal zips all around him, slashing at him with his razor-sharp claws. Zarbon yells out in pain and isn't going to be humiliated any longer. Zarbon powers up, pushing Metal off of him as he transforms. With this power, Zarbon can unleash a faster flurry of strikes into Metal Sonic, with these being extremely powerful. Metal is beaten down on by Zarbon, with the hulking monster attempting to rip him into shreds. Amy tries to swing around to help him in any way that she can, but it's no use, and she's just getting in the way. This isn't the end though, as while this monster may be powerful, Metal has something up his sleeve. He takes out the wisp vial that Tails had, and crushes it to power himself into the laser. With this insane boost, Metal's speed is amplified so many times more than it already was. So when he flies all around Zarbon, Zarbon can't even see him. Metal claws away at Zarbon once more, with Zarbon being beaten bloody on his knees in a matter of seconds due to the speed boost of Metal. The Zarbon near Death's door, he tells them to stop attacking, as he can join up with them to defeat Frieza. Amy doesn't buy this one bit, and goes to grab some more rope to bind him up. But, Metal slashes right at his throat, spurting blood everywhere. Amy yells out as Zarbon collapses dead to the ground. Amy tells Metal that there is no need to kill him, with Metal turning and saying he was programmed to kill. So, if he has a chance to kill the enemy, he's going to take it. If this directive wasn't changed to help her and her friends, then he would have already killed her too. This sends a chill down Amy's spine, as he grabs her and they continue to fly off towards the Grand Elder. Frieza sits back in his ship, seething that the others have been gone for so long. He finally has a chance to one-up Black Doom's newfound power with the Dragon Balls, but then these other aliens come in and ruin those chances? Not today. He's gonna call in the cavalry to fix this mess. He's gonna call in the Ginyu Force. Amy and Metal Sonic make their way to the Grand Elder, and meet with him and his protector, Nail. Amy is really surprised to see Nail, as he's the spinning image of Piccolo. Amy attempts to explain their situation, but to make things easier, the Grand Elder places his hand on Amy's head to read her mind. He is surprised to find that the son of Katas made his way to Earth and split himself into two. If he hadn't, then they would have been able to easily wipe out the Saiyan invaders, especially with that chaos power that they achieved. He removes his hand from her head, and says that he can tell that she means no harm at all, and her intentions are very pure. She even stepped in to save his child, Dende, so that itself earns her this Dragon Ball. Grand Elder hands Amy the Dragon Ball, with her thanking him very much for this, and she promises not to let him down. He then says that to give her a better chance for the incoming fight, he'll awaken her hidden power. He places his hand on her head once more, and Amy has her potential unlocked by Guru. Amy explodes in energy, looking down and not even recognizing herself. She had this much power inside her? This is amazing! She floats up, ecstatic that she can now fly as well. She floats up to Guru to give him a kiss on the cheek, as she tells Metal it's time for them to head back to the others and revive their friends. Amy and Metal burst off from Guru's at super speed. Amy happy how strong she is and how fast she can fly now. It doesn't take very long for them to make it back, and Krillin is very impressed with how powerful that burst from Guru made her. She's even stronger than him now. Metal places the last two Dragon Balls down, as they celebrate that they managed to get all seven without being killed by Frieza. This is when everybody detects six large powers coming towards them at super speeds. Everybody gets into a fighting position, as Bulma runs back inside the cave to hide. 
the Ginyu Force lands right in front of the group, saying they're a brave bunch stealing these Dragon Balls from Lord Frieza, and that all of them are here to finish him off and give them back. Krillin asks who these guys are, as they all get into their poses. They are Birder, Raccoon, Jace, Guldo, Banyu, and Ginyu. Together, they are the Ginyu Force, and they're here to take them down. Back on the Nocturne ship, the group are fighting off the Black Arms the best they can. Shade, Julie Sue, and Gohan fight off the normal Black Arms members, with Gohan making sure to stay close to Eggman so he doesn't get killed. Eggman tries his best to help out with some of the guns he packed for himself, but they're pretty useless against these very strong aliens. Goku and Sonic have gone after Eclipse, with him being an extremely powerful force to go against. He kinda reminds them of Shadow in a way, since he can somehow use Chaos Control to teleport all around them. They wonder how he can use such an ability without the emeralds, but have no time to think on that as they need to stare on their toes. Eclipse is able to handle a Kaioken Sonic pretty fine on his own, but with an Akari Goku coming in against him too, it's a pretty tough fight, no matter how skilled he is. Black Death goes against Vegeta, with the prince attempting to erase him from existence. But Black Death is a very strong force to be reckoned with, and a little much for Vegeta to handle as he is. Vegeta has to resort to using his Wisp powers once more on Black Death, which actually surprises him, as he didn't expect this Saiyan to use those kind of powers on him. This makes the fight a little more even, and he is pushed back by the slightest amount more. No matter how many Chaos Beams Eclipse can fire at Sonic and Goku, it doesn't seem to be helping him, and Eclipse calls out to Black Death that he needs some help over here. Black Death says he's a little busy with Vegeta right now, so he's on his own. This isn't looking good for Eclipse, so he communicates to Black Death through the Hive Mind if he can call for backup. Black Death contemplates this, as if Eclipse is beaten, then Goku and Sonic will team up with Vegeta, and with all their powers, he'll surely be killed. So they're probably gonna need it. Black Death communicates with Black Doom, and says he's sorry for reaching out as he's on his way to Namek, but they have an issue here with the last of the Nocturnes and the Saiyans. Black Doom communicates back, asking why are there Saiyans there? They're all supposed to have been wiped out besides the ones Frieza kept alive. Black Death says that the ones Frieza kept alive have rebelled against him, and they're here giving Eclipse a run for his money. Black Doom tells him that with their ultimate soldier here, he'll kill the last of the Saiyans and the Nocturnes to rid the universe of those scum. The ultimate weapon will be there in a second. Black Death smiles as he says that all of them are done for now. The ultimate weapon is on its way. Vegeta laughs, saying that these guys aren't as bad as they used to be. He's sure he can handle the ultimate weapon all by himself. Vegeta is then cut off as he gets a spear thrown right through his shoulder. He screams out in pain as he reverts back to normal. Goku and Sonic turn to see what's wrong, as two Chaos Blasts hit them dead on in the chest, faster than they could see. They go flying back as well, reverting back to normal. Gohan, Shade, and Julie Sue rush over to help them back up, as Eggman looks on in front of him in horror. No, it can't be. Goku and Sonic slowly sit up to see what happened, with them not being able to believe what they're seeing either. The ultimate weapon. No, it's Shadow. <laughs>